The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. <laughs> is your FBI, an official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. Are you one of the 50 million Americans covered by Social Security? If so, have you any clear idea of your rights and benefits under Social Security? Well, there may be a pleasant surprise in store for you. For in a few minutes, you will learn from our sponsor, the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States, how easy it is to build Social Security into full security. <laughs> Tonight's FBI file, Lady of Larceny. The criminal of necessity lives by his wits. But inevitably there comes the time when they no longer can protect him. For the criminal's habits and methods are, almost without exception, as unchanging as the spots of a leopard. And though he be cunning and ingenious enough to escape justice today, he leaves behind him, as in tonight's case from the files of your FBI, the blueprint for his certain defeat tomorrow. <laughs> There was nothing out of the ordinary about the scene that took place that morning in the visitor's room of a county jail in a certain state along the Atlantic seaboard. That is, nothing that appeared out of the ordinary to the stony-faced guard seated at one end of the long table, where he could watch both sides of the low wooden partition. Just a mother and her prisoner's son conversing across the partition, talking mother and son talk. After a while, the son glances up at the clock on the wall, then... Well, Mom, I guess that time's about up. Oh, goodness. It seems like I'd only been here a minute. They don't give us very much time, you know. Anyway, it was swell of you to come to see me. I'll come as often as they let me, Frederick. I know you will. And when I'm not here, you just know that you're in my heart every minute, son. Yeah, sure. Oh, dear, I almost forgot something. What? Well, I was only able to bring you two packages of cigarettes this oh, time. Oh, but... gee, you swell. Oh, here. Uh, here they Wait are. Wait a minute. Hey, guard. Yeah? Mom's brought me some cigarettes. All right for me to take them? Well, well why wouldn't it be all right? I have to watch everything we get, Mom. Well, then, say, what could be wrong with a little package of cigarettes? Okay for me to take them, guard? Yeah, go ahead. Thanks. Well, wait now. I brought you some matches, too. Oh. Uh, here they are. Okay. Uh, you be careful with them now, son. What? Well, you know you were always careless with matches. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mom. I won't set anything on fire with them. All right. Time's up. Uh. Okay. Well, so long, Mom. Give me a little kiss over the fence, huh? Of course. Goodbye, son. And I'll see you soon. Real soon, I hope. That's okay. It's your old lady show. Yeah, I just left her. Want a cigarette? Okay. Here you are. Thanks. What was new with her? That's what I'm going to find out right now. What do you mean? It's 
notebook of matches here. Yeah. That's our communication system. Huh? See this little staple that clamps the matches and the book together? Yeah. This one was put in by Mom. Oh, I don't get it. Wait till I yank it out, I'll show you. There. I'll pull this scratch flap back. Yeah. Separate the two layers of matches. Uh-huh. And down at the bottom here, there should be a message. Well, I'll be... Shh. Quiet, stupid. What does it say? Everything's set for tonight. No kidding? Yeah. What's the deal? We make the break at 10 o'clock. Mom will be waiting for us outside in a red Packard ambulance. Ambulance? Yeah. That's real smart. Nobody will stop us in a wagon like that. Well, who's making the break? There'll be eight of us all together. Do the other guys stay with us? No, we split up four and four. Hey, I wonder where your old lady got an ambulance. Listen, kid, if we needed it, that old gal could heist a ferry boat. Mom? Uh, yes? Anything uh, tailing us? Uh, no, not a soul. We got the road all to ourselves. Swell. Uh, I have an idea the police are following the young men in the other car. I hope so. Uh... What's your friend's name? Uh, one that was wounded. Whitey. Oh, goodness. I, I hope he's not too badly hurt. I got an idea that he is. Oh, that's a pity. Uh, do you think that I should go in back and see if there's anything I can do for no, him? No, no, you stay oh. here. The other guys will take care of him okay. Are they all coming with us to the hideout? No, just Whitey. The other two get out after we cross the state line. Oh. Mom, I want you to know that we certainly appreciate what you've done for us. Oh, it was nothing. Are you kidding? Getting this ambulance, these white jackets and caps? Frederick, it was just what any other mother would do, so forget it. Two hours after the prison break, deputies overtook and captured the four men who had gotten away in the other car. But Fred Taylor, the wounded Whitey Monroe, and their companions were still at large. Convinced that they had crossed the state line after killing a guard, prison officials telephoned the local field office of the FBI. A few minutes later, Special Agents Norman and Perry were searching the cell which had been occupied by Taylor and Monroe for some possible lead. Well, Perry, they seem to have taken whatever effects they had with them. Maybe we'll get a lead out of the stolen ambulance when it turns up. Yes. Did you check on their visitors? Yes. Monroe had no visitors at all, and Taylor, none except his mother. I see. Well, from the guard's description, you couldn't suspect her of anything. No. Come on. We'll study the files on both of them and see if... Now, wait a minute. What? On the floor under the cot here. Well, what is it? An empty matchbook. Oh. Hmm. Bottom staple has been pulled loose, and the whole match section is gone. You got a book of matches there? Uh, yes, right here. Pull the staple loose, will you? Okay. There you are. And now spread the two layers apart. Right. If you wanted to smuggle a message to somebody, that'd be a good place to write it, wouldn't it? Yeah, sure. Now look at their empty matchbook. Staple is still partly in place, but look at this. Yeah, there's a couple of other little holes. Right. Looks like the original staple was taken out, something written or inserted inside, and then the book was restapled. Well, what do you know? Under the microscope in the lab, we'll be able to find the tool markings on the staple of the machine that stamped it in place. What'll that tell us, though? Maybe nothing we want to know right now, but maybe an awful lot later on. <laughs> Take a shot of this, Whitey. Okay, Fred. How do you feel, kid? Not so hot. Well, we got the slug out of you anyway. So by morning, you ought to be feeling better. I, I hope so. Wish we could get you a doc. We can't risk bringing him out here to the tourist camp. I'll make it okay. Try to cork off now, kid. I'm going in the other room for a little business meeting with Mom. Okay. 
Hi, Mom. Hello, son. Well, see so you got the little office all set up. <laughs> Portable typewriter, staple machine. Well, I didn't see any use in wasting time. Where's the portable printing press? We won't need one this time. We got to print up some checks on some company to draw money on, don't we? I already have a book of checks, son. <laughs> Look, uh, how do you like these? The Florida company? The big oil company, you mean? Uh-huh. Where'd you get these? Now, son, you mustn't pry into Mother's little secret. <laughs> I also have a copy of the president's signature, T.V. Jackson. Terrific. <laughs> and for the small checks, here's a copy of the cashier's signature. <laughs> Mom, you didn't miss a thing. I run my <laughs> office just as efficiently as they do theirs, son. <laughs> okay, sweetheart. Look, stick a voucher in the typewriter, will you? Huh? We've got to buy us a second-hand car the first thing in the morning. Uh, how much will you need? Oh, better make it for $1,500 at least. Uh, then we'll staple a memo to the check explaining the money represents a bonus. How's that? Swell. Uh, yeah, and instead of making it for 1500 even, I'll... Uh, well, I'll make it $1,472.83. That'll sound more legitimate. <laughs> That's my mom. Oh, oh, one thing, son. Yeah. I want you to be careful when you go to buy that used car. There are a lot of crooks in business these days. There's the police garage, Norman. Yes, I guess we can pull right in. Play enough room on your side? Plenty. Good morning, officer. Good morning. We're special agents, Norman and Perry, FBI. Oh, yeah. How do you do? Glad to, to meet you. Hello. Glad to meet you. Hey, you fellas made a mighty quick trip down here to Charleston. Well, can't afford to lose much time. Well, the ambulance we picked up is right over here. Fine. We didn't touch a thing inside, just hauled her from where she was found. Where was that? Just outside of town. Yeah, I'd better answer that. I'll be back in a minute. Right. Want to take a look inside, Perry? Okay. Find anything? Looks like they played the part all the way. How's that? There's two white jackets. Caps. Hmm. I'll take the caps. You search the jackets. Right. These were probably already in the ambulance when it was stolen. Yes. These caps don't seem to yield up much, no? Oh, oh, wait a minute. What did you find? Two or three strands of dark hair from whoever was wearing this cap. We'll turn them over to the lab and add them to our other little keepsakes, the match cover and staple. Mr. Norman? Yeah? Your office is calling you long distance. Thanks. Come on, Perry. I wonder what's up. Maybe something on the prison break. Uh, here you are. Thank you. Norman speaking. What? Yes? Yes, where? What's the name of the camp? Well, never mind. We'll, we'll find it. Right? What's up? Two of the men who got away in the ambulance have been picked up. Good. They said Taylor and Monroe dropped them and then headed for a tourist camp just south of Charleston on Highway 26. I'll bet I know the one they mean, Mr. Norman. Fine. Guess who was with them, Perry? Who? Their outside help, the one who stole the ambulance. Taylor's mother. What? Give us the name of that camp, officer. We'll get going. <laughs> Taylor. Uh, yes, young man. Where's Fred? Fred? Oh, he went into town. What for? To buy an automobile. Taking chances, ain't he? With the police? Yeah. Oh, I'm sure they don't suspect that we're within a hundred miles of here. What's with the car? Are we moving on? Well, yeah. Oh, uh, just a minute. Who is it? Me, ma'am. Oh. Well, come on in, son. Thanks. Did you, did you find the car? Yeah, I got us a real good one. Splendid. Fred. Yeah, Whitey. Are we pulling out of here? Yeah. Mom, you better go in and pack. Yeah, but don't you think I that... want to talk to Whitey alone. Oh. Oh. Uh, very well. Whitey? Yeah. I hate to tell you this, but here's where we part company. What do you mean? Mom and I are pulling out. Alone. 
Look, I can make it okay. Oh, you're in bad shape. You slow us down, get us all caught. But I can't stay here with nobody to look after me. Yeah, I know. Well, then I gotta go with you. I'm sorry, kid. You're not going anywhere. Huh? I really hate to do this, Whitey. Now, wait a minute. I gotta look out for a mom. Fred, no, go! <coughs> Coming, Mother. We will return in just a moment to tonight's case, which shows how your FBI helps provide national security. Now, let's eavesdrop on a conversation about social security between a man named George Leland and his friend, the Equitable Society representative. I don't get it. Why would my brother and his wife need $12,000 more than my wife and I to retire at 65 on an income of $200 a month? Because your brother is a dentist. Well, what's that got to do with it, Milton? Well, George, dentists aren't usually covered by Social Security. You are. Oh, you don't mean to tell me that Social Security will be worth anything like $12,000 to me. That's exactly what I do mean. When you and your wife get to be 65, you'll be entitled to an annuity from Social Security that, at present rate, would cost $12,000 in cash. Hey, that's real money. I never realized that Social Security would be worth that much to me. Yes, George, many Americans don't realize what a wonderful asset they have in Social Security. They have never discovered how easy it is to build Social Security into full security through life insurance. Most people are amazed when they discover how little it costs. For instance, if you already own some life insurance, your Equitable Society man may be able to show you how only a few dollars extra per month will give your wife complete protection and assure you a comfortable retirement income through the Equitable Extended Income Plan. Remember, your Social Security benefits vary according to your age, salary, and family situation. So why not get the facts? Find out exactly what you are entitled to under Social Security. The government has prepared a special card that will help you secure this information. To obtain one of these cards, get in touch with your Equitable Society representative or send your name and address on a postcard to the Equitable Society care of this station. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E, -E, the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now, back to the FBI file, Lady of Larceny. Much has been written about honor and loyalty among thieves. But none of it is borne out by the facts. Criminals are without a sense of honor, else they would not be criminals. And the only sense of loyalty they possess is that of loyalty to self-interest. When the chips are down, they think only of themselves. And whoever stands in their way is removed by brutal force. <laughs> It was not more than 30 minutes after Fred Taylor cruelly bludgeoned the wounded Whitey Monroe and drove away with his mother that FBI agents Norman and Perry pulled into the tourist camp and were directed by the owner to the right cabin. By the door, Perry. Well, it's unlocked. Let's go in. Well, looks like they ducked out. Yes. Must have gotten a hold of some new transportation. Stole another car, probably. Maybe they had one of their own waiting around here for them. Wait a minute. What? One of them has been left behind. What do you mean? Look in there, hanging off the side of the bed. Uh, yeah. Come on. He's the one that was wounded. Look. Uh-huh. Whitey Monroe. Oh. The blows on the head are what he got for being in the way, I guess. Nice couple. Taylor and his mother. Yeah. Well, look around and see what you can find, Perry. I'm going to have a talk with the owner of the camp and then put in a long-distance call to our office. Uh, 
Frederick? Yeah, Mom. Uh, wouldn't you like me to drive for a while? No, no, I feel fine. Uh, you know, I've just been thinking about that unfortunate young man. Whitey? Yeah. What about him? Well, I had quite a talk with him when you went in to buy this car. Yeah? He was looking forward so to taking this trip with us. He'd never been to Florida. Look, Mom, are you trying to make me feel like a heel? Oh, of course not, son. Oh, you did the right thing. I, well, I just feel sorry for anyone missing scenery like this. Oh, oh. What's the matter? Oh, I just dabbed myself with this crochet needle. What is that thing you're making? Uh, a doily. What's it good for? To put under a plate. But we ain't got a plate. Well, we're going to have. In fact, we're going to have a lot of plates and a home to go with them. Homes cost money, Mom. Yeah, I know. We're never going to make any big bundle cashing these nickel and dime checks. Yeah, I realize that, too. That's why we're headed for Palm Beach. What do you mean? We're going to make one big score and go under for a while. How? <laughs> Guess who's vacationing at her Palm Beach home? Who? The wife of the president of the Florida Company, Mrs. P.V. Jackson. So what? Well, we're using Florida Company checks, aren't we? Yeah. Well, Mrs. T.B. Jackson, uh, who won't know about it, of course, is going to help us cash one of her husband's company checks for $10,000. Perry, let's review our facts, eh? All right, Norman. We know Taylor and his mother are a check-forging team. That's what he was in for when he broke jail. Yes. We also know that they've skipped, but we have no idea in which direction. However, they're bound to start passing checks again, and when they do, we should be able to pick up the trail. You sound pretty optimistic. Well, don't forget, in addition to their descriptions, we pretty well know their methods. They always staple a phony auditing memo to each check, and they also... Yeah. Wait a minute, I'll get it. Norman speaking. Yes. Yes, what was this? I see. Well, when? Uh-huh. Uh, give me the dealer's name, will you? Right. We'll get busy right away. What's up? The first staple check has shown up. Where? A man posed as a sales agent of the Florida Company with a big bonus check. He passed it right here in Charleston three days ago for a used car. Well... The check was drawn on the Florida Company's bank, which received it yesterday and refused payments. Does the car dealer know about it yet? No, but I have his name. You'd better hop over and see him. Okay. Uh, get a description of the man who passed the check. Right. Also find out the license and the make of the car. Can I come in, Norman? Come ahead. How'd you make out? I talked with the used car dealer. Mm -hmm. From his description, I'd say it was Taylor, all right, who passed that check. I've already confirmed that. How? The check was sent over here to the office. We examined the staple. The tool markings are the same as the ones we found on that book of matches. I see. Did the car dealer have any idea where Taylor was going? No, but I think I've got a lead on that anyway. Now, what is it? Well, the dealer saw Taylor drive the car across the street to a gas station. Yeah. So I went over there and questioned the manager. Uh-huh, yeah. He remembered Taylor, said that he got some road maps from him, then asked directions for the best way to get to Palm Beach. Uh-huh. That doesn't mean he's headed for there, of course. No, but it's the only definite information we have. What's our next move? Let's contact our resident agent in Palm Beach. Give him a description of Taylor in the car, also his pattern of operation. Then maybe we ought to hop down there ourselves. Mom? Mom? Shh, quiet, son. I'm on the telephone. Oh. Uh, now, what was that you were saying, young man? Oh. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, that's awfully kind of you. I'll send the chauffeur over to the bank right away. Thank you. What was that all about? I was talking to the bank, pretending that I was Mrs. T.B. Jackson. Oh. I said that I was going to South America and that Mr. Jackson was joining me there later. Uh -huh. Naturally, I needed some money for the trip. And I'm the chauffeur, huh? Exactly. So you take this Florida company check for $10,000 over to the bank and they'll give you the money. Wait a minute, I just <laughs> thought of something. Huh? That guy's liable to call Mrs. Jackson at her house and just to check back. I know. That's why I'm going to call Mrs. Jackson's home right now and keep the line tied up until you get it. 
Ah. Hurry on, son. Hurry. <laughs> Okay, Mom. We're in. Well, good work, son. He had all that beautiful green stuff ready when I walked into the bank. <laughs> Splendid. Now we can ditch our hot car, buy us a nice cool one, and then lamb out for a good place oh, to go under. I'll certainly be happy to do that. All right. Huh? Don't make a move. Either one. Who are you? We're special agents of the FBI. No, no, no. Wait a minute. Oh. Perry. Right. You might be interested to know that the reason you got that money so easy, Taylor, was because our resident agent had already warned the bank. Huh? We could have picked you up there, but we wanted you to take us to your partner, too. Well, son, it looks like our firm has been liquidated again. Although forgery of the Florida company's checks was a federal crime, Fred Taylor was turned over to the state in which he had cold-bloodedly murdered his former cellmate. Tried and convicted there, Taylor was later electrocuted. His mother is serving a term in the federal penitentiary for a conspiracy to violate the National Stolen Property Act. Yes, the criminal's habits and methods are, almost without exception, as unchanging as the spots of a leopard. And though he be cunning and ingenious enough to escape justice today, he leaves behind him the blueprint for his certain defeat tomorrow. In just a moment, we'll tell you about next week's colorful story from the files of your FBI. And now, once again, friends, let me remind you that no matter how much you earn, you have a valuable asset in Social Security, and your Equitable Society representative will gladly show you how easy it is to build your Social Security into full security. He will explain to you how Social Security and life insurance can work together for your complete protection and will help you determine exactly where you stand under Social Security. No obligation, of course. Phone him tomorrow. Your Equitable Society representative is listed in your local phone book under the name Equitable, E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E, -E, the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, The Friendly Hitchhiker. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. The author was Frank Ferris, and your narrator was Dean Carlton. This is your FBI, is a Jerry Devine production. This is Milton Cross speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Friendly Hitchhiker on This Is Your FBI. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.